treatment of hypokalemic shock includes C, stopping the loss. Certainly volume replacement or volume resuscitation is a big part of treating hypovolemia, but the initial treatment should be focused on stopping the loss. Now let me give you kind of an extreme example. When I worked as a paramedic, we would have patients who were in car accidents or whatever, had hypovolemic shock, and that patient would end up having low blood pressure, let's say that they're like 70 over 50. Okay, our goal was, and our treatment protocol, said that we were supposed to give them fluids to get their systolic pressure up to 100. So we would give fluids, and we would give fluids, and we would give fluids until we got the systolic up to 100. By the time the patient made it to the ER, they may have gotten four, five, six liters of IV fluid. Then in the ER, they get a little bit more. By the time they make it to the OR, that patient's had eight or 10 liters of IV fluid. Now what we did is we raised their blood pressure so they could bleed more, and replaced it with fluids, IV fluids. That's not a good trade-off, is it? So what we've learned with trauma patients is that we want to stop the loss, plug the hole first, then we can do the volume replacement. And the same thing is true with any other kind of volume replacement issue in your patient. If your patient's vomiting, rather than just giving them fluids and letting them vomit, let's stop the vomiting. See, the problem with hypovolemia is you can never replace what the patient loses. You can never replace what the patient loses. If your patient vomits 1,000 cc's of bright red blood, you can't give it back to them. You can go to the blood bank and you can give him some units of blood from the blood bank, but that's not his blood. See how it's always going to be a poor replacement? So we want to stop the loss first so the patient keeps their own blood, body fluid, etc. rather than giving them fluids to replace that stuff. So plug the hole, then we do the wire replacement.